meat is both high in protein and high in fat. So if you want to include a little bit of meat in your diet, I'm not the food police and I'm not going to tell you you can't do it. But I am going to tell you that having a little bit of meat in your diet is better than having a lot of meat in your diet, but having zero meat in your diet might actually be the best option. Now, the main reason why people living with diabetes are drawn to a diet like the carnivore diet or the ketogenic diet or a low carbohydrate diet in particular is because when you adopt one of these low carbohydrate regimens, you can do a number of things. Number one, you can lose weight rapidly and people love that. Number two, you can lower your A1C rapidly and who doesn't want that? Number three, you can reduce your fasting blood glucose rapidly, and that's a good thing. And number four, you can lower your fasting insulin concentrations rapidly, and that's also a good thing. In addition to that, meat tastes good. I'll be the first person to tell you that because I ate it for the first 22 years of my life, okay? Meat is often associated with being masculine, and it's also backed by charismatic people on social media, often with advanced medical degrees. And eating meat is also associated with strength and power. And it conjures up these images of powerful carnivorous animals like lions and tigers and sharks and makes you feel like if you were to eat meat that you also will become a very powerful creature, okay? The true results of a meat-based diet become more clear in the long term and they're harder to see in the short term. And the reason is because over the course of time, eating meat increases your level of insulin resistance. It increases your LDL cholesterol, which is your bad cholesterol. And it increases your fasting blood glucose levels. And this is something that can be repeated over and over. Now, if you take a look into the research, what you'll find is that these principles are shown in large scale studies as well as small scale studies. Now, the EPIC study, which stands for the European Pro Prospective Investigation into Cancer and Nutrition, is one of the largest investigations ever performed to investigate the connection between nutrition and chronic disease. And it involved hundreds of researchers, more than 500,000 participants, and 12 years of data. What the researchers discovered was very straightforward, which is that meat, especially processed meats like bacon and cold cuts and sausage and hot dogs and hamburgers, increases your risk for type 2 diabetes, while eating a diet rich in fruits and vegetables reduces your diabetes risk. You would think that this would be common knowledge, but unfortunately, it takes these very large investigations to understand these conclusions. The EPIC study also revealed that replacing 5% of saturated fat with fructose that either comes from fruits or refined sources reduces your diabetes risk by 30%, and that replacing 5% of protein with fructose reduces your diabetes risk by 28%. Now, we're going to film some more information about fructose because there's a lot of people who are freaked out about fructose being in any foods, including fruit, thinking that fructose is a dietary enemy. But what this study demonstrated is that when you increase your fructose intake in substitution for the consumption of meat, you actually reduce your diabetes risk instead of increasing it. The Adventist Health Study performed an analysis of more than 8,000 people in a community in Southern California. And this took place over the course of 17 years and they found extremely strong relationships between meat consumption and diabetes. In comparison with people who ate zero meat, people who ate meat as infrequently as once per week were 29% more likely to develop diabetes, and those who ate salted or processed meats were 38% more likely to develop diabetes. This is very important because we're not talking about large serving sizes, we're just talking about a little bit of meat eaten frequently, and that can significantly increase your risk for the development of type 2 diabetes. The Health Professionals Follow-Up Study was another study that was performed in 2002, and researchers analyzed data from more than 42,000 male subjects over 12 years and found that men who ate more total and more saturated fat developed significantly more cases of type 2 diabetes. They found that men who ate processed meats like bacon, hot dogs, hamburgers, sausage, salami, and bologna at least five times per week, okay, five servings per week, were 46% more likely to develop type 2 diabetes than those who ate meat only once per month. And the Nurses Health Study to this day is one of the largest and most comprehensive studies on the connection between meat and diabetes risk. In 2011, researchers from the Harvard Public School, uh, School of Public Health performed an analysis of data from more than 200,000 men and women 
taken over the course of 19 years. Their results were tremendous. They found that both unprocessed and processed red meat consumption increased the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Eating just one serving per day of unprocessed red meat increased diabetes risk by 12%, which may not sound like a large risk increase, but it is. And eating one serving per day of processed red meat increased diabetes risk by 32%. The higher your meat intake, the greater your risk for the development of type 2 diabetes over the subsequent four years. So if you can't have meat and you know that eating meat increases your risk for type 2 diabetes, well, what else? What should I be eating, Cyrus? Let's think about it from this different perspective. Apples are food. Oats are food. A Twinkie is a lab experiment. And lab experiments are full of addicting chemicals that can influence the neurobiology of your brain and they can cause intense food cravings. The trick is that food manufacturers have gotten very good about disguising lab experiments as food in the grocery store. For a lot of people, the hardest part comes to not eating lab experiments and selecting real food instead. The problem is that food manufacturers are really good at making food that is a lab experiment look real tasty and have the right words on the packaging to make you want to buy it at the grocery store. Damn you, food manufacturers. Why are you so good at what you do? Okay. All of this leads to the fact that a low-fat plant-based whole food diet is a more logical choice for optimal diabetes health. We like to refer to it as eating green light foods because you have a green light to eat as much food as you want without portion control, without restricting your calorie intake, and without trying to eat less and less food over the course of time. Because this lifestyle is specifically designed to contain foods that are low in calorie density on purpose because that enables you to feel full without taking on a large amount of calories. And that enables you to lower your body weight while reducing your blood glucose simultaneously. If you enjoy eating food, if you enjoy eating colorful fruits, vegetables, legumes, and whole grains, then guess what? You are going to enjoy this very much. Now, I personally have been eating a low-fat plant-based whole food diet for 19 and a half years, and I've managed to eat an average of 3,200 calories per day for 7,117 days and counting, okay? So if you're worried that you're not going to be able to eat enough food, trust me when I say you absolutely can. Not only am I an example of that, but there are thousands of people who have demonstrated that they can eat anywhere from 1,200 calories a day at the low end, north of 4,000 calories to, per day at the high end. And there's also entire movies about plant-based athletes who eat nothing but a plant-based diet who are eating even more than 4,000 calories per day on nothing but plant material. Hey, hey, this video was just a snippet of a much more in-depth discussion. Now we know not everyone has the time to watch an hour long video, so I hope that this highlight taught you something helpful. Now, if you're interested in watching the full length deep dive, then I highly recommend that you check it out because there's a ton more to learn on the subject. And this is just hitting the tip of the tip of the iceberg. Just click on the link on the screen to check out the full length episode. And if you're already going, whoa, 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 that's a lot to digest. I just wanna live a healthy life and call it a day. Then don't worry because we have expert coaches who can help get you true long lasting health that can actually be very simple and be your accountability coach and give you a personalized roadmap to lower your blood sugar, to lose weight and to get off medication for good. Now the science behind health is overly complicated, unfortunately, but getting healthy doesn't have to be. Visit masteringdiabetes.org slash start. Answer some questions about yourself and schedule a free consultation to talk with somebody on our team who's gonna show you exactly how we've transformed the lives of thousands of people using the Mastering Diabetes Method. It's important you answer all of the questions to the best of your ability because we wanna be able to get you the right coach. We have a limited number of spots available and that's why it's imperative to find a good fit. Again, visit masteringdiabetes.org slash start to schedule a free zero commitment discovery call and start taking control of your health today.